Why is it a bad thing to try to live in harmony with nature? This is Skywatch TV News for Tuesday, September 15th. I'm Derek Gilbert. In studio with us is the founder of Adullam Films and the writer and producer of a film, a uh, new documentary in which the identity of the mysterious R.C. Christian, the man responsible for the Georgia Guidestones, is finally revealed after 35 years. It is Dark Clouds Over Elberton, the true story of the Georgia Guidestones. And uh, Chris Pinto joins us in the studio again today. Hey, Chris. Derek. Good to be back. Um, the message of the Georgia Guidestones, as you discussed yesterday, is um, very pro-nature, uh, almost to an extreme. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, the first of its 10 guides uh, calls for reducing the population of the world to 500 million, which means more than 90% of us would have to go. Um, but ultimately, what, what is, what's wrong with the idea of trying to live in harmony with nature, leave room for nature, the Guidestones say, uh, to try to strike a balance with uh, the creation around us? Well, what, is the what is it about the Georgia Guidestone message that you as a Christian find troubling? Well, first of all, I want to say that I don't think environmental, you know, it, being environmentally conscious, I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. I think it's great. I mean, I grew up uh, when I was a kid in the 1970s. I still remember the old commercial with the uh, the American Indian who's walking out yeah, in and the, the single the woods, tier, the single tier, sure. and you're seeing all the pollution everywhere. Right. Uh, that's impacted. Project Source, save our American resources. Yeah. yeah. Give a hoot, don't pollute. Right, that's the right. other one. Sure. So I grew up with all of that, and I agree with taking care of the environment in a sensible, sober-minded way. It's where environmentalism becomes politicized and it becomes extreme. And then you're given the impression that trees and animals are more important than human beings. I think that's where it becomes uh, uh, dangerous and, and troubling mm -hmm. uh, because, and that's what the, uh, the Guidestones are pointing to. It's pointing to not only limiting the world population of people, uh, but then guiding the reproduction process hmm. uh, in, a, in a way. And then if you, when we get into showing the book that was published by R.C. Christian years after the monument was erected, he makes it very clear in that book that he's talking about having world government and having government control over the world population where how people are reproducing and so on, how many children they have is being limited by the powers of government. Uh, and that's where it becomes more like a big brother, new world order type system that certainly seems to be the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Mm -hmm. It seems to move in that direction. Uh, many people believe this is leading to the kingdom of the Antichrist. In fact, the guidestones are sometimes said to contain the Ten Commandments of the Antichrist because they're these ten guides that are etched into stone. Mm -hmm. Um, because in, in our postmodern society, you don't want to command anyone to do anything, you know, as in the commandment. You just want to offer suggestions. Right. And, and that's and that's exactly <laughs> what the because they, they look like these commands. I mean, it looks like it's obviously imitating the right. Ten Commandments. Uh, but then in the book, he explains and he says, no, these are not commands. I'm I'm not in a position to give commands, he says. Uh, but then his the philosophy that he's communicating is one that is still very prominent in the world today. In fact, it is when we've got President Obama telling us that climate change and environmentalism is the number one issue mm -hmm. uh, that points back to the Georgia Guidestones. And uh, I've talked about before how the uh, the pope is coming to America. Yes. And he's very in, you know, he's got his uh, his uh, environmental encyclical that he's uh, produced and he's appointed uh, an, an advisor to his council, John Schnellenhuber, yeah. who has said that the world would be better off if we got rid of about six billion people. Mm -hmm. So th this these philosophies, even though the monument dates back to 1980, these philosophies are still at the forefront of world politics today. How would you say the uh, guides on the Georgia Guidestones uh, are, are consistent with an anti-Christian message. I mean, why do you say that these, or why do people sometimes refer to these as the Ten Commandments of the Antichrist? I think the phrase, let these be guidestones to an age of reason, has a lot to do with it. Uh, on the monument itself, it, it has that phrase there, but then when you read his book, R.C. Christian's book that he published, um, he clearly makes reference to Thomas Paine. And he called his book Common Sense Renewed, again, referring to Paine's common sense. So the age of reason, that phrase, that was what uh, Paine called his book, The Age of Reason, in which he's calling for the abolishment of Christianity. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, uh, he's, he's 
engages in this diatribe against the Christian faith and really all organized religion, but Christianity in particular, he calls a fraud and says that it should be abolished. Mm -hmm. And that is, that's one of the aspects of the Guidestones monument that it tends to look at humanity in a very clinical, cold hearted way where people who are deemed genetically inferior, because that's kind of how the, the Nazis viewed people. Yeah. People who are genetically inferior, well, let's just get rid of them. Mm -hmm. They're useless eaters, as they say. So we just get rid of them and let's focus on the people that we think are genetically superior because mm -hmm. they're going to build this utopian uh, society. And so getting rid of Christianity opens the door to that kind of cold hearted, dark age uh, worldview. And also this idea then that we can create heaven on earth through our own activity because Christian doctrine says heaven on earth is not going to happen until he comes back. Right, right. That, that man ultimately does not have the power, the ability to save himself. We must rely upon God. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Mm -hmm. And so we believe that, uh, that the redemption of the world only comes through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But I'm, I'm also reminded, I keep coming back to the scripture where Paul says, uh, you see your calling, brethren, how not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty men, not many noble are called. For God has chosen the foolish things of this world to shame the wise and weak things to shame them that are strong and things which are base, things which are despised God hath chosen and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are. So uh, God has chosen the poor for salvation. Mm -hmm. He's chosen the poor for eternity and so on. And yet the view of the eugenics movement and the, the socialist movement is to kind of look down, not kind of, but really to look down on people that are seen as inferior. They're poor for a reason. They're poor because they're not equipped to handle, to, exactly. to, to make their, make, make, to be successful. Exactly. Whereas Christianity, because of the Lord Jesus Christ says, no, we should reach out to these people. We should lead them to salvation because God loves them. He created them. Uh, and he's called them uh, to be saved. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's the, I think to me, that's the most disturbing part of the monument is it seems to call for the abolishment of Christianity. And we're seeing such a war on Christianity in the world today. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas it's Christianity that reaches out to the starving world, to the lost and dying world uh, and says, we want to reach out. We want to help even as God has helped us, mm -hmm. even as God loved us through the Lord Jesus Christ, we want to love the people around us. Mm. In the documentary, uh, again, you and Dr. Michael Bennett discovered the identity of R.C. Christian. Uh, I, in my view, the, the, the evidence is compelling. And you don't think uh, there's any doubt. I, I don't believe there's any doubt. <laughs> um, and beyond just identifying him, you do some digging into this gentleman's background and find out some of what he professed to believe from people who knew him in his hometown. Right. Um, how did those views, and which just a couple of minutes to go here, uh, how did those views help us to interpret and um, process the message of the Georgia Guidestones? Well, it confirmed, I think, his views because he was a prominent citizen in his own hometown. Uh, he was not a na <clears throat> nationally recognized figure, but he was prominent in his own hometown. People knew who he was. The local historians there, we, we actually went and interviewed the local historians who knew R.C. Christian in life. And they introduced us to some of the, uh, the documents there from local newspapers and publications where he was known for having this philosophy about population control. Hmm. He was known. And uh, in fact, in, uh, there's like a, uh, you know, a, uh, a profile on him in one of the local, local publications, history. local history. And it's talking about his life and, and his career and what he did and so on. And then it goes right into his philosophy. And we show it to you right there on camera from the local historians uh, that. And then, uh, of course, he, he had passed away a number of years ago. But we take you out to his tombstone. And on his tombstone, it's very clear the way that he wanted to be remembered mm -hmm. uh, is uh, it totally fits with the character of R.C. Christian mm -hmm. and this monument. Uh, and then the witness of the people who knew him and how he was known there at the local country club. There were conversations that he had with people uh, dealing with, you know, racial superiority of certain groups over other groups and this kind of thing. Hmm. All of the pieces of the puzzle uh, fit together. He was somewhat of a, while he was an admired figure in his community, we have to say that to be fair, uh, he was also a controversial figure. There's no, mm. no question about that. Mm. 
The identity of R.C. Christian finally revealed after 35 years. Dark Clouds Over Elberton, the true story of the Georgia Guidestones is available from the Skywatch TV store for $24.95 plus shipping and handling. But we'd also like to have, uh, like you to have, as our gift to you, uh, an additional $20 value, Forbidden Secrets of the Labyrinth by Mark Flynn, an essential book for your personal reference library. You'll find that special package available at skywatchtvstore.com. Quick program note tonight on the Christian Television Network, uh, Carl Gallops joins us to talk about preparedness as our series of programs on National Preparedness Month continues. That program airs at uh, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 8.30 Central Time on the Christian Television Network, Direct TV Channel 376, Dish Network Channel 267, the Glory Star Satellite Channel 117, and you can also watch it live on the Internet at the Christian Television Network's website, ctnonline.com. Again, Chris Pinto, writer and director, the, uh, the new film uh, that answers a lot of questions, Dark Clouds Over Elberton. Thanks for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me, Derek. Good to be and, here. And thank you for watching. As we keep watch, I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is Skywatch TV. After 35 years, it is Dark Clouds Over Elberton, the true story of the Georgia Guidestones. And uh, Chris Pinto joins us in the studio again today. Hey, Chris. Derek. Good to be back. Um, the message of the Georgia Guidestones, as you discussed yesterday, is um, very pro-nature, uh, almost to an extreme. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, the first of its 10 guides uh, calls for reducing the population of the world to 500 million, which means more than 90 percent of us would have to go. Um, but ultimately, what, what is, what's wrong with the idea of trying to live in harmony with nature, leave room for nature, the Guidestones say, uh, to try to strike a balance with uh, the creation around us? What is, the what is it about the Georgia Guidestone message that you as a Christian find troubling? Well, first of all, I want to say that I don't think environmental, you know, it, being environmentally conscious, I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. I think it's great. I mean, I grew up uh, when I was a kid in the 1970s, I still remember the old commercial with the uh, the American Indian and and troubling mm -hmm. uh, because and that's what the uh, the guidestones are pointing to. It's pointing to not only limiting the world population of people, uh, but then guiding the reproduction process mm. uh, in a in a way. And then if you when we get into showing the book that was published by R. C. Christian years after the monument was erected, he makes it very clear in that book that he's talking about having world government and having government control over the world population who's walking out yeah, in the, the single the woods, tier, the single tier sure. he's seeing all the pollution everywhere. Right. Uh, that's impacted. Project Source, save our American resources. Yeah, yeah. give a hoot, don't pollute. Right, that's the right. other one. Sure. So I grew up with all of that and I agree with taking care of the environment in a sensible, sober minded way. It's where environmentalism becomes politicized and it becomes extreme. And then you're given the impression that trees and animals are more important than human beings. I think that's where it becomes um, uh, dangerous. Why is it a bad thing to try to live in harmony with nature? This is Skywatch TV News for Tuesday, September 15th. I'm Derek Gilbert. In studio with us is the founder of Adullam Films and the writer and producer of a film, a uh, new documentary in which the identity of the mysterious R.C. Christian, the man responsible for the Georgia Guidestones, is finally revealed.